Hi, I'm Steve Miller, call me Slim, and this is the Ask Slim Market Week. It's a look back at what happened in the financial markets in the past week, and a look forward to what might happen in the next week, and hopefully lots of great ideas and opportunities for you throughout this show. Well, the stock market made good gains in the last week as investors danced to a drumbeat of better than expected earnings. With over 75% of earnings in in the S&P 500, I'm sorry, with over 100% in, 75% beat uh, as uh, analysts either stink uh, as far as their projections go and their estimates on, uh, on earnings or they just want to underestimate so that the stocks look good. Uh, with stocks making new highs, it doesn't really matter that it's based on suppressed interest rates. In other words, the earnings uh, that are occurring are based on them not having to pay a lot of money to borrow money, well, not to expand their business, but for financial engineering and to buy their own stock. The concept of normalization, well, that's now lost, as instead we have QE forever, as the Fed tries to manage their huge problems with liquidity and the banks having to borrow money and scramble because of the fact that, well, the Fed creates so much paper that the dealers get stuck. So the Fed has to keep creating that money and buying up their own paper. And it's just this incredible um, machine that they think will last forever uh, that in truth is just going to come apart at some point. And with the president now celebrating 1.9% GDP as fantastic, um, he did the same thing, uh, talked about 1.9% GDP under Obama in 2012 and says the U.S. is in an economic deep crisis. So it's great for him at 1.9%, but uh, not so much when it was for President Obama. Uh, he, he, he is really clueless when it comes to um, the economics of this uh, country, and uh, all that 1.9% growth uh, comes uh, as his tax cut stimulation is over. And the Fed that he criticizes uh, for not cutting enough, well, they created a need for a permanent crisis posture that they are in. The president just doesn't get it. Uh, I would say he's economically ignorant which is kind of frightening. I'm going to get some emails about that. I'm not calling him a bad guy, remember, or not really even calling him a bad president. Um, I'm just simply saying he doesn't get this economic situation at all, and uh, he's going to push us into even more and more trouble. The stock market was choppy this week. Starting out, uh, it moved up uh, and then had some moments where it uh, slid to the downside, but nothing can really hold on the downside at this point. The hopes uh, uh, for the FOMC cut and uh, the benefit of uh, a trade settlement, that all had the market doing better um, earlier in the week. Selling did come Wednesday and Thursday as China balks about the amount of grain purchases. $40, $50 billion? Well, that's not going to happen. Uh, there's no way they can digest all of that with the fact that they actually bought uh, plenty of soybeans from South America. So that's just fantasy and numbers that the president was uh, pushing. Uh, and so the market did move down temporarily uh, on that kind of news. And um, the president, uh, he was kind of stalling anyway. Uh, was the, the big issues between the U.S. and China, well, they're not getting settled. And uh, the Trump uh, now is talking about a change of venue uh, for the formal signing of the phase one deal that uh, is not maybe even close to getting signed. Also, the Chicago P. PMI absolutely crashed, and uh, that had the market upset also. Friday, the ISM number came out weak. Third month in a row, it was weaker than uh, estimating. Um, 
Also uh, hurting the market uh, in midweek temporarily on Thursday was the House vote to formalize the impeachment inquiry, inquiry. And there's going to be a lot of things coming out around that as they now go public with testimonies in there. So that's going to be uh, heavily in the news coming up. Friday, the market took off on the upside. And uh, the besides earnings helping and Apple just absolutely nonstop moving to the upside, um, the payroll numbers were much better than actually expected. They expected some pretty bad numbers, and uh, the, the uh, last couple of months were upgraded also. So the market took heart and shorts took cover, and uh, the market moved up pretty sharply here on Friday. We're recording this now at around midday. Uh, the stock market, um, the strength that we expected in Q4, uh, it's here, and the market is looking just incredibly strong. Um, this uh, uh, look at the uh, interest rate analysis that we have been sharing uh, said that, you know, November probably will be up uh, and we're starting out pretty good. Now, our, our intermediate analysis shows the potential for some modest corrective time in December, but then we're looking for higher prices again in January, February. So overall, we're looking for this choppy upward move all the way up through um, maybe the very beginning of February. But then we think things are really going to change and uh, that the bear uh, will take over and come back with a vengeance. Well, what will the bear want to avenge? That's the question. Well, it's the Fed creating chaos in the financial markets with QE forever and all of this uh, potential or real liquidity prices. It's the false sense of earnings that they created by suppressing interest rates to just ridiculous levels. Here the, uh, in the, the Fed in the U.S. and the ECB and the Bank of Japan and the Bank of England and all of these com countries that have got these incredibly false suppressed interest rates in this crazy bizarre world that we live in um, that's going to be avenged and uh, the the huge income disparity that this creates is the the very rich get richer uh, and the mainstream is just, just simply left behind and we could s definitely see a pickup in civil unrest uh, as far as that goes, and especially as this political year comes uh, forth, um, we have a worldwide economic slowdown that just could turn into a very serious recession in one of these countries kind of tipping the dominoes. And the, the um, manufacturing really is very much in a recession. Uh, in this country and uh, around the world. And this is probably going to be the nastiest election year in almost 200 years. I don't think you're going to find another one as ugly. You'll have to go back to 1828 uh, when incumbent John Quincy Adams ran uh, against um, Andrew Jackson. And if you go back and look at history, that was one of the ugliest elections ever. And this one right now is very likely to surpass that. So look for um, just, I think, a huge amount of volatility as we get past this January, uh, February, I think, market top and bear market coming up. Stocks, uh, the stocks uh, up a one and a quarter, one and a half percent uh, for the major indexes on the week. Uh, the bonds, they dipped early, but then came back. 30s gain about one and a half points. 10 years drop uh, on yield about 10 basis points. And the Fed has done an excellent job managing yield to scare, to take the scare out of the market as they now have a positive yield curve in there. And that was really their goal. Knock down the short-term um, interest rates by buying up all those treasury bills and that knocked down uh, that uh, short end of the curve, and now the curve is uh, now in normalization, we'll call it. Gold, um, that moved uh, down early and then gained about $7 on the week. Uh, we expected a weak dollar. It was down five days in a row, about six-tenths of a percent. Didn't quite hit our downside target. However, we still think it's going to with ease as we think the dollar's got trouble. And I'll show you towards the end of the show what we think is a lot of weakness coming 
uh, pretty soon uh, in the the dollar matched with this big upside move in gold. So oil market down about a dollar uh, forty on the week, and uh, we have uh, lots and lots to talk about as we move forward in this show. Don't forget, follow me on Twitter at Ask Slim and become a YouTube subscriber. Lots to come. All right, we are back and we're going to be looking at stocks, the best and worst stocks for the week. But uh, before that, I do have an announcement for you that I think is going to be uh, really exciting. It's, I know it's exciting for us uh, as uh, we at Slim come out with new products all of the time because our goal is to you know, raise your odds of success. So we have two exciting new products uh, to um, show you. Um, our, our objective here really is to deliver professional grade technical analysis uh, really at the highest level you can get plus trader education and trade planning tools that you as traders or investors can use. Yes, I say investors because now we're creating things for people with longer term holdings. First thing we're going to show you is our new um, products here that uh, is trade, trade ideas. Now, this is an upgrade to what is our present trade setups product. Uh, that we have, and that service is, not, is going to be upgraded pretty soon. Uh, and it's going to give more specific uh, approach and of, to favorable entry ranges and target zones on trade and trades. And we're going to bring them a lot more often, uh, as often as daily, with longs and shorts coming. So this will be great information for active traders. These are people that are uh, active, swing traders, self-directed investors that have shorter holding periods. We look at swing trade uh, timeframes for that purpose. Uh, the next thing is our new a Slimulator Momentum Tracker. Uh, the Ask Slim Slimulator Momentum Tracker, it's kind of a tongue twister, um, is programmed with our proprietary short-term, intermediate-term, and long-term indicators. The built-in uh, algorithms combine our multi-time frame momentum analysis. This generates overall directional bias market outlook. So we'll be giving you the outlook uh, for each of the um, individual symbols and the overall directional bias. So it's two different pieces of output there. And the position traders and investors that you know have perspective of three month time frame or longer are going to really love this. This gives you the momentum conditions and gives you a real good sense of uh, what you want to be holding, when you want to be adding, when you want to be cautious. It's just great for longer term holders. And this is going to be fantastic part of our level one membership. Uh, this new Slimulator combined, combined with our data partner in Trinio, great service that brings you this data, allows you to search our proprietary Aslim momentum readings on more than a thousand symbols will be available to you every single day. It's it, it's it's live. It's it's uh, just automated and just fantastic. You'll just think this is incredible. We're going to be beta testing this uh, coming up really soon uh, for all Ask Slim members, even free members. So if you're not a, an Ask Slim member or a free member and you want to be part of that beta test. Uh, then you really want to become an Aslim member. And all of our members are going to be able to get a chance to look at this. Uh, for more information on this, uh, just write to Matt at AskSlim.com, M-A-T-T -T at AskSlim.com, and he will give you much more information on the um, new, uh, these two new um, products that we're coming out with, the upgrade uh, to our trade setups, trade ideas, and the Slimulator Momentum Tracker for longer term position holders and investors. Just absolutely will be incredible. It will blow you away. All right, so now let's take a look at our five best stocks and five worst stocks of the week. We have some bonuses that we're going to show you in here. And the first one we're going to show you is 
GE. So GE has been a stock that's really been languishing. It's had a terrible hard time as many aspects of their business have been in a lot of trouble. It made a low down at 666, uh, what a number, down in December of 18. And now for the last year, you could see it's tried to rally and not really been able to hold. So what we have right now in here, and you could see the cyclical rhythms. If you're new to this uh, type of analysis, we uh, our analysis is multi-time frame analysis with, uh, with, a, with the core of our work as cycle analysis. We look at uh, uh, several different um, aspects of the charts, uh, looking at time and price, which almost nothing else does. And we look at what's called uh, configuration and translation. So when a stock makes a peak in the fourth week like this, uh, and then just barely tests it, it has all this time to fall. Now when a stock rallies up for as long as this one has right over here, and you can see the big up week right over here, um, their, their earnings beat, uh, and they have built, built this long base, and they talk about much better cash flow. And that makes sense when you see this upward bias that you see in this cycle here with only a couple weeks to pull back or correct. So this is a bullish pattern forming. If you get a dip here in this next couple of weeks, I think that GE is very viable. So better earnings, better cash flow, and a better pattern. And I think GE is a viable stock, up 13% on the week, a great move. Another stock that's really been a disappointment is Triple D. Uh, this is 3D Printing Company, and you can see the stock had gotten up near 22. It crashed all the way down close to $6, and now it is doing better. Now, there, the key that it has gotten over the last cycle peak, this is very important. So you see this cycle right in here, and it makes the bottom and then rallies. This looks a lot like the GE pattern, doesn't it? And then it gets above this last high. So that's cycle peak resistance, and breaking out is positive. We think this stock is also much improved. They have done a terrible job in an industry that has got great prospects. Uh, especially uh, medical 3D printing is just going to be massive. Um, hopefully they get uh, in gear on this and they can 3D print themselves success. And uh, the stock right now looks like it's going to get up into the 10s or 11s to us. This is a uh, much improved pattern in there. Uh, their uh, earnings beat and their sales were much better than expected. So that's really good. U.S. Dale, I'm kind of showing you stocks that have been pretty beaten up because that's what investors are going to be looking for, things that they can buy that they think is valuable. Now, this is cycle analysis with colored phasing in there. It just gives you an idea of rising and neutral or corrective or negative phasing uh, in there. And you can see the green zones are the early parts, the rising part of the cycle here, the corrective part right over here, and then the negative part is the red, green, yellow yellow, red, green, no yellow as it broke down very quickly and became red, green, yellow, red. Anytime you see green, yellow, red, you know it's in a negative pattern, right? And here is green. So we're just turning up right over there. Let's get a little closer look. And you can see that um, it's getting up into that area of resistance, uh, U.S. Steel. Um, they they beat uh, means that they they had a, a be, they had a better loss than expected. They still lost money. Um, the other steels are ticking up also. ATI up 10 percent. U.S. Steel up 12 percent. These are really bad patterns in a in a really struggling industry. The the investors are going to be buying these because they look like bargains, uh, cheap stocks that do nothing but lose money. I'm not excited to buy this stock. Uh, I think it's going to struggle here in this $13, $14 area uh, and then begin to roll over. You could see our projection. The dotted lines are the, where the cycle begins and then our projection as we think it stalls up in this area and then comes down again. So U.S. Steel, 12% um, gain, good gain on the week because it lost less than people expect. I don't think that's a great reason to be loading up on a stock, do you? NOV, National Oil Well. Well, the drilling category was kind of mixed this week. Um, they lost money again. Analysts have upgraded the stock. 
To us, it looks like it's going nowhere fast. It's going to have to build some kind of a base in there and, and heal itself. Uh, but again, losing money, uh, and I would say it's going to be a while before the drillers are able to get into a place where they're uh, highly successful again and making a lot of money. Um, this is just a stock that's trying to bounce in here, but our projection is really failing in those FIB confluences, as you can see and then pulling back again. Question is, will it even make that level up there as it has a hard time moving? So uh, that's a look at National Oil Well, and uh, they gain 9.5% on the week, uh, and that is uh, a um, stock that I'm not buying. So the next one we're going to look at, next group actually we'll talk about, <coughs> drugs and healthcare. Cigna, uh, that is not it. It is right here. Cigna, you could see, gets a good gain. Now, this has got multiple um, cycles in there. In other words, it has a, a, what we call a dominant cycle right over here, and then a minor cycle. And you can see the dominant cycle is made up of two minor cycles, and there's clarity right here in the minor cycle. You can see that in this one right here, and then it broke down under that level, so it got hit very hard. And this is a basing cycle. That's good. It says that the likelihood of taking out this level is high. We're going to put it up to the top of the FIB confluence here at about 195. Gained 6.5% on the week. Earnings beat. Guidance was strong. In this group also, in the drugs healthcare, Pfizer um, gains about 5%. That moves up to resistance area. We don't think it's going to go much further. And the stock I'm not going to show you because I want you to watch the video. Uh, we put Put out a video in stock sectors yesterday um, that uh, talked about stocks that we thought would do well. In other words, what stocks do you buy when the stocks are at a high? That's the problem is that in investors and traders, well, the market is getting away from them and they don't want to buy now. Traders think, I can't buy them now. They're going to fall. Uh, not good risk rewards. Investors say, well, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to buy them here. I've got to wait for them to pull back. In the meantime, the market keeps going up. And as we said, we thought it's going to go up into um, the early part of February. So you, you know, what are you going to buy? Well, we gave 25 stocks, and Mylan was one of them, MYL, up 6% on the week. We think it is one of the best patterns out there right now, so I'm not going to show it to you. I'm going to make you look, figure it out, and go watch that video. Uh, that we put out on stock sectors yesterday. That's the uh, best stocks for the week in here, and uh, we're going to be back in a moment. And I'm going to show you the five worst stocks for the week, which um, I think there's some uh, very interesting things there. Because I'm also going to show you um, some stocks in those groups that are very interesting. So, and some really more advanced cycle analysis, so you have a chance to learn. It's coming. All right, for the worst stocks for the week, um, like I said, we're going to look at the five worst, but I have some things to add in here that I think are going to be kind of interesting and uh, in how I come to some of the analysis. So uh, the, the first thing we're going to look at uh, in here is we're going to move from Cigna <coughs> to WDC. Um, this is Western Digital. Now, Western Digital was down about 13% on the week. Their earnings beat, but their revenues really missed. So a 4% beat on earnings could not compensate the fact that they beat that they uh, gui that they guided lower significantly. Their CEO is leaving, and their revenues were weak. And I'm going to show you what I believe to be the principle of synchronicity at work. Uh, and that's one of the eight principles in our cycle analysis workshop. If you're interested in that workshop, write to me at slim at asslim.com, uh, and I'll just send you some information on that. The uh, WDC, uh, and, and and this is in the, the storage category, hardware storage, um, the, uh, the stock trades a lot with Seagate. So this is Western Digital. And you can see in here that what we're showing you is that the the pattern is a breakdown. In other words, there was a cycle low right over here, and then it rallied and got below that low. So we have this um, breakdown situation right in there. 
Now, uh, how, do, how do I know for sure that this is a key low right over here? Well, you could say that you can't really be sure, and maybe it's making a bottom right over here as it tests that 34-week moving average. However, Seagate STX is very clear, and that trades very much like this one does. And you could see the stock moving up. So the low on the same date in Seagate, you could see nice gain in here versus Western Digital. Now, I'm worried about Seagate here. I think Seagate's going to not be able to make that much ground and fail. But again, back to Western Digital right over here. Western Digital made the low at the same place right over here as Seagate. And then that's the principle of synchronicity because like stocks make peaks and, and valleys very close to each other, peaks and troughs. This one rallied and now broke down already. Um, makes me worried about Seagate and Western Digital points to decline straight through February. So this is a bad pattern in here. That principle of synchronicity to me proves that this is a, uh, a, a stock and a group that could be having a lot of trouble. So that's Western Digital down 14, 13, 14 percent on the week. And I think it's a sell if it tries to pick its head up. Floor, the next one, down 12% on the week. This is interesting because you can see in here the cyclical patterns. Now, uh, part of our cycle analysis workshop and a video that we have uh, coming, and I'll, I'll tell you about a video special in a couple moments, um, uh, it talks about swing high, swing low analysis. And what we do is we create these zones, uh, buy zones, sell zones, based on the cyclical patterns. And you can see that, you know, you get the big decline, it gets up to the sell zone, has another big decline in this completed cycle, rallies to the sell zone, and another big decline in what is this completed cycle. You can see that. So while floor comes out losing 12% on the week, and they had a big loss on a charge, I, you know, I think that's a capitulation. And I, my, my sense is this stock is a buy. So the stock right now is at 18. You're buying a weak stock in this case. You have to be aggressive. And based on the projections, we can see it get up here to about 22 to 23. Uh, that would be between now and sometime maybe in January. So this stock to me is making a low. It traded down to 16 right over there in the panic. It's now closer to 18. Uh, and we think it's viable. We think that the direction is likely to be up. Now, this is really interesting. And the next one is Sun Power, SPWR. And I'm going to, again, rely on the principle of synchronicity. So you can see Sun Power right over here. It uh, th These cycles were what we were looking at, the blue. And then you have the blue dash line. Now, why did I put in this blue dash cycle, which refers with the references to a low being made right now. This was really disappointing because we saw this big upside move. I was positive. I thought it would get up to that Fib extension target zone up there. It fell short of it and then broke that low and, and turned negative and continued to fall. Now, why would I even think that this is a low right now coming up based on this pattern? Well, this low date right over here around 11.4 uh, where we're very close to right now on this weekly chart is in alignment with the rest of the group. So if I look at FSLR for solar, look at this pattern right over here. It says that a bottom is due right now. And it's been falling with sun power. The whole group's been moving down. And now we look like we're about to get a rally from this area of 52 and a half, potentially up here to about maybe close to 60. So we're looking for upticks here and a bottom due in first solar. CSIQ, which is Canadian solar, is identical. You can see the low right over here pointing to the same low period and then likely going to move up from this area of around 17 and a half, potentially getting up to close to 21. So these are worst case that I can make as these stocks are getting ready to bottom. So if these two stocks are getting ready to bottom, and you can see there was a shifted cycle in there, then I have to go back to the one who that uh, uh, report that uh, fell that caused me to look at this today, SPWR, and say, 
it makes sense that that cycle has shifted over there and there's an important low coming. So what that says to me then is that we're going to get a rally. And I haven't put a projection in here, but about halfway back from this low here of 9, uh, from the decline of 15.5, that would be about a 3 to 4 point rally. So that would put you up somewhere uh, around 11 to $12 and a very reasonable long side trade. So I'm going to revise this. Now, this is what I do. I look at these groups and I say, what are the messages? Just like I looked at Western Digital and Seagate, they're telling me negative things. Uh, SunPower uh, looks to me like it's about to bottom here in alignment with First Solar and Canadian um, uh, Solar. And I think that group is about to get a sizable uptick, even if it's a negative group. So I wanted you to get an idea of how I look at these multiple stocks within a group to get the timings for the peaks and troughs. And right now, to me, it's pretty obvious that that is coming. Uh, Whirlpool is the next one we're going to look at, WHR. And you can see in here uh, a very good way to analyze what we call as the directional components. So when a directional component is negative, you get lows lower than the previous low. When you get the rally and hit the sell zone, well, it's pretty likely it's going to break that low, and it did. And it falls all the way down through the projection right over here, bottomed a little uh, late right over there. Uh, tested the low and then you have the next rally and note that the low here is much higher than these lows over here that changes the directional component and says the probabilities are high that it's going to get better than that level in the next rally you could see it did that and now look at this this corrective zone right over here it says that you have a few weeks of potential downtick in here now uh, this stock earnings missed analysts though are upgrading the stock and we think it's going to correct on this earnings miss for another few weeks but we've established a buy zone in there based on the swing high swing low analysis the longer this stays up the higher the buy zone that we calculate so that's where we're getting into right now. A few more weeks, we think of this correction. It probably gets support uh, in these moving averages as they're moving up the 13-week and the 34-week. And then we think it will move up again above that high. Just like it got above that high, this bullish configuration moves it above here, and we will be targeting 165 to 170 on the upside sometime late January or early February. So this is a stock down 5% on the week that we like. So take a look here at Tesla, T-S-L-A. It's the fifth one, well, the fifth one, but really the eighth one we're going to look at right now. Very interesting cycle analysis in here. You see the dominant cycle, this big, thick blue cycle? Note how it follows that, right? So it has the perfect rhythm, and the next one, the perfect rhythm, breaks under that low, capitulates, and now everything is changed in here. The minor cycle hits the support zone it blasts off to the upside the earnings report come out with uh, good production numbers and then it starts to pull back it's moving down now about five percent on the week after this big earnings jump as analysts come out and say well this production they've had is unsustainable well that might be true but i think that investors are going to look beyond that because the model y is supposed to be a fantastic car and i believe that it's going to be it certainly is going to be the uh, one of the biggest sellers in crossovers and uh, this stock which is likely to keep chopping around and come down maybe the next we'll call it three to five weeks we think is going to take off and this area over here uh, as low as 288 I doubt it the 23 percent uh, uh, this uh, support right over here is about 306 so somewhere in this area right over here 306 to 288 we think it's going to get down into this zone and then move up pretty sharply again after that so uh, we think this stock is very very much repaired a little big low down over here the secondary low here and then this uh, half cycle low coming right over here, all much higher, stair stepping upward. The probabilities of getting above that 336 level are better than 80% after this correction, and maybe even testing this level up over here near 380. So we really like Tesla now. We believe me, we've had times when we've hated it, 
But of course, we are bull bear agnostic here at Ask Slim. We just look at the patterns and share those with you. And that's what I think we have now, a condition where Tesla may correct some more, but overall, it is really looking like a very, very good position. So uh, to be uh, considering the long side as this correction works its way out. That is a look at the worst stocks for the week, and we're going to be right back, and I'm going to bring you some very interesting uh, thoughts about the view for the next week. <laughs> All right, uh, for our short-term view for the coming week, um, I'm going to get to that in a second. But, you know, I showed you two new products uh, earlier in the show. Uh, we, we have so many things here at Ask Slim. If, if you're a trader really tr wanting to learn to be, how to be involved in the markets, we have eight categories of videos produced. That's more than 400 videos. There's something like nearly 80 videos on how to use different aspects of technical analysis. There are many videos in there about style, strategy, and plan. Trader psychology, some just really great things about personal issues that could be in your way. Um, we do uh, stock sectors like we did last Thursday where we brought great stocks, we think, for uh, this favorable period in the market. Just so many things that we bring that are of value to you. So if you want to get those 400 videos, I'm going to tell you how to do that on a special in just a second. But I also want you to see this. This uh, You'll also be participating in our stock index report daily report that gives you information every morning on the three major indexes uh, support resistances uh, and uh, everything that you need to know about where the potentials are for accelerations in either direction and then if you want to get a look at our charts you can load it up on your thinkorswim platform or you can look at our live stream. And this is our live stream uh, of the major indexes. And you can see the incredible information in here. Um, this is our uh, reversal scout that we call it. And when it reverses and then takes a directional move, there's a high probability it's going to move through acceleration zones and then start to stall in areas of resistance. This one nailed the resistance. This is the S&P 500, the NASDAQ and the Russell. This one nailed the resistance right over here as it exploded through the acceleration zone. And you can see in here, we've been talking about the Russell overperforming. Well, look at while the S&P 500 had a downtick and the NASDAQ had a downtick, the Russell could not even tick down. This is incredible strength in the Russell. And uh, we're continuing to look for the Russell to overperform. So not only is this great for support and resistance and breakout zones and, and uh, this is the places where you're likely to accelerate so you can maximize your trades, add on to your winners. I mean, this is just fantastic information. There is, <clears throat> it, it's just a, 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 an incredible amount of work uh, that our team does and Matt gets a lot of credit for this and RV supporting him on this and the other way goes for RV getting supported by Matt as far as um, the uh, analysis uh, on all of our um, trade setups and our cycle analysis on our focus list of stocks uh, and of course I'm backing them all up so we have a fantastic team here and uh, this I don't know how you could trade uh, a short term without having this great information you, you can actually get our 400 videos to binge watch and uh, our stock index report uh, and our ETF report will be included in there also uh, and you just have great stuff uh, that you could have for $14. 14 days this special for $14. That's 10 trading sessions, 14 days to watch our videos, uh, to really explore the value of the information that we share with you. Write Matt, M-A-T-T -T, at AskSlim.com. If you're a free member, he'll, up, he'll give you the link to upgrade. Uh, if you're a level one member, he'll give you the link to upgrade and try that. Uh, and if you have not been an Ask Slim member before, please do contact Matt, M-A-T-T -T, at AskSlim.com. And he will send you a special link, 14 days for $14. 
just incredible information you'll be able to watch over 400 videos plus getting all of this great stuff for short-term trading all right so now let's get into our short-term view for the coming week i always want to be accountable to what i said last week uh, as far as light crude and gold goes um i was close on those we're going to get two-thirds credit approximately we, we the net was wrong we thought it would be small up and it was small down in light crude and um, the shorter term pattern in gold was was wrong we've talked about a breakout coming uh but uh over, overall uh, it, it acted pretty much like we thought uh and uh the dollar was really good the the uh practically a bullseye uh in the bond market we missed the stock market we thought that the stock market would be down on the week but it made a much earlier bottom in these patterns than we thought let's get into these short-term views right over here as i move from tesla uh into uh forward slash cl that's the first thing we're going to look at and do our projections for the coming week so this is uh, a look at light crude now you can see it's got kind of a stair step upward pattern going on here we think it's going to pull back a little bit right as this cycle pulls down maybe test this low somewhere around 54 and then turn up again so we're looking for uh, one more dip and then a move up here to 57 that's what we're going to call an up week uh, with a potential early week dip first maybe test 54 54 and a half and then 56 and a half 57 over the next couple of weeks next thing we're going to look at is the gold market forward slash gc and uh this is really smelling like breakout to me now i have revised in this we've adopted what we saw in there as a minor shift and now this really looks like it's going to break out now i want you to note momentum in here momentum is choppy it's the slim ribbon is kind of laying on itself and even though this has turned green and giving you positive momentum it has to start to widen out and move up for you to have confidence that momentum is driving it on the upside <clears throat> we don't have that yet still because of the way this timing is working out and the intermediate pattern that's so ready to turn up it looks to me like it's going to break out now you could see it just kind of just getting above that channel but not being able to hold it it really needs to get above this level around 15 19 15 20 this level right over here was 15 26 it really needs to get over those levels in order um, to uh, be what we would consider uh, a potential strong breakout so where are those levels well i'm just going to grab this right over here uh, and just put that uh, put that in right uh, that's not what I wanted um, what I wanted to do was grab this right over here there we go so there's that uh, high right over there uh, and here's the that other high right over here it needs to kind of get through that zone right over there and if it does I think it accelerates to the upside we're looking near term 1550 1570s uh, I think uh, and we're gonna call uh, a breakout pending here possible surge to the upside we'll call for an up week and we'll need to see that momentum beginning to improve that level right over there 1525 1526 if it gets over there expect it to be accelerating to the upside uh, with in an aggressive nature and enhancing that is what we think is dollar weakness uh, and uh, the, uh, with the with the Fed printing I mean dollars um, like crazy in order to keep buying up their own bills yes Treasury um, creating paper then um, the the Fed uh, going in there and buying up the paper and they have what they think is this perpetual motion machine that will last forever you could take that and MMT and throw them all in the garbage uh, because eventually what it's going to mean is the dollar crash interest rate spike gold market soars that's where we're going to go i don't want to be too bearish right now and say all these things um, because i think that the stock market will hold up for a while but this is you know we expected trouble in the in the dollar market and here it is projected out over here we expect a down week maybe towards the end of the week making a low and then curling up and then another big down wave in here 
first supports right over here around 96.60 then we think it's going to be much lower than that so bad pattern in here note the momentum has turned negative over here when you get negative momentum as you see right over here in the slim ribbon you get these red bars that you see right over here and when the projection oscillator gets overbought and then turns down when you have a condition of negative momentum you get accelerations to the downside and you can see that very clearly in here now look over here see the momentum positive right over here see the projection oscillator oversold and the acceleration to the upside so that's the opposite that you saw right over there this brings the acceleration to the downside it tells you that momentum is not only negative but likely to remain negative so the dollar in a lot of trouble and that is going to be a time period when gold can move up now we think gold could accelerate in a big way silver's got a slightly different pattern where we think if it follows on the upside it has a little more risk of testing the lows one more time out and some some weeks out so that's a look at the dollar market which we think is going to help gold and accelerate to the downside. Bond market, um, we're going to call this one a bullseye. We said last week that we thought that um, it would tick down um, and then begin to rally. Um, we thought it would test 158.14 uh, support and then move to the upside and then um, get uh, a decent rally for a couple of weeks. This gets down right over here to that weekly support zone we talked about and then ticked up. So this was a perfect pattern. Momentum still negative. Overbought condition. This says it's not going to be able to push through. It says you'll probably get a little pull to pull back again. We're going to look for a choppy market in here, not getting through these levels right you can see our projections in here is that the sell zone is going to hold it and not be able to get very far right now and we think overall in the longer term and i'll do a big picture analysis on this somewhere down the road um, we think that the result is going to be that the fed who wants rates lower is going to get rates higher uh, and uh, the the, the um, bond market is going to punish the fed for their bad acting so uh we're th th third week off of this bottom third uh, day off the bottom here it's not going to make it's not going to break very far it probably chop a little bit and then try to move up again um, we're going to look for it um, to test um, these areas up here between 161.25, 162.08 resistance, and then kind of fail and then back off for a little bit. So upside bias in here, we'll call it an up week, uh, and uh, it's going to need to overcome that negative momentum for it to be able to get any uh, sustained rally at all. <clears throat> so now let's look at the stock market. Now the stock market has been massively strong. The, not only did the intermediate patterns bottom three weeks earlier than we anticipated, but now the shorter term pattern is tracing out very bullish patterns. And I'm going to show you that. I'm going to do a little bigger analysis here and show you um, these type of patterns and what they bring. They barely can get a downtick at all. Um, the, every time there's a little bit of an interday downtick, the buyers come in. Uh, when they manage to sell them overnight, uh, the buyers come in. So there is a ton of buying in the stock market right now. And the low caps are starting to drive it, which is final phase, usually when that happens. So that's important. I'm going to switch over now and show you the S&P 500. And sh I'm, I'm going to show you some things in here that are really very important. Now, I'm, I'm going to look at a long, little longer chart here. Uh, l let's first look at where we are right now. So the the uh, the cycle low was made right over here. And uh, you can see the cycle low was made a little bit off right over here, but still, this is your cycle pattern, and it's made up of a couple of parts in there. The uh, next thing is the next cycle. Now, you can see this half cycle right here. It barely gave you a correction. And look at as the momentum turned up, the it be and the slim ribbon began to widen it gave you the upward acceleration that's what i told you we need to see in gold 
it rallied for this whole time period in here and gave you two down ticks that you couldn't even hold. And now here's today, way up over here. You could see that. This period of risk we were looking at, it was worthless. I mean, it just did not give you anything on the downside. And it just shows you the incredible strength that is in this market. Now, this is the first day up in this new rising phase of the cycle. Now, uh, this is in a unusual condition. Now, I'm going to go back and I'm going to show you other market right over here when similar things happened right here in this rising phase. Look at this, what we call a cycle that is swamped, barely can give you a down tick and screams to the upside. Note the slim ribbon, positive all the way up here barely can give you a down tick that's the yellow zone right over there here's another one right over here each time the market accelerated to the upside each one of those you can see that after those what we call as right hand translations those are very very bullish patterns and you can see each of these times the projection oscillator got oversold it was a buy signal, buy, 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 every one of those. Here was a sell signal when it turned negative, and that worked perfectly. So what's happening right now is that we have this uh, period in here of super strength, and the projection oscillator could not even really get oversold. It did right over here for a second, and then it moved strongly to the upside. We have a very strong condition right now, and the likelihood of a downtick being able to hold is very small. Now, I always want to give you the caveat. My analysis could be wrong. Of course, I'm probably wrong 35% or 40% of the time. Uh, the the overall pattern in here will speak to us, however. This is the key low that occurred on around day 19 off of this low. So we're running between 18 and 22, um, and that's pretty normal. And then we started to tick up. If that low goes right over here, that's the short-term cycle support, that breakdown would be negative. So that is the key number we're looking at right over there, which is at 30.23. I don't think it's likely at all that would happen. It would take some really bad news and that would break this rally that we're having. Right now, the probabilities are high. We're going to move towards the Fibonacci extensions that are on our weekly patterns that are up here right around 3090, right up there. Now we're at 3062. A while ago, that sounded far-fetched, right? But 3090 is our target for the moment and we're going to call the coming week an up week momentum strong but the projection oscillator is a little bit overbought right over here so that might get in the way a little bit we might get some choppy action uh, but overall we'd say uh, good and powerful strength in this market upward bias is what we see and that's not likely to change and uh, we would say that um, the correction uh, that we were expecting has come and gone. This window for correction brought nothing but these intraday declines that it completely rejected. Notice how the slim ribbon has been support and is often support when it's positive, just like it did right in here until it broke down and became negative. So everything about this is, is just really positive. And if the market wants to be negative, it will tell us. In the meantime, you can see the super strength that's in here in this very bullish configuration. Our next target, 3090 on the upside, maybe 3100. And we think that is uh, a very, very powerful formation that we are looking at. That's it. I have showed you a ton. I hope that you loved all of the advanced type of analysis that I showed you. Do follow us uh, on Twitter at Ask Slim. Uh, give us a thumbs up on YouTube if you watch this on YouTube. Write to Matt, M-A-T-T -T at AskSlim.com about new products, beta testing, about getting our 14-day uh, $14 special where you can watch all the videos you want plus get our stock index report daily and live stream incredible information I just want you to be so careful it is so crazy out there I'm always wishing you great trading well, I'm going to